All right, so where are we? Uh, we've got one deconvolution under our belt. We have both the algebraic and the sort of conceptual or picture version of it. We've got two deconvolution under our belt. By the way, we're not going to do this, but 3D is exactly the same way. Um, you've got now a volume, x, y, t, x, y, z, whatever it is. Think like a medical imaging. And now you put a unit impulse, which is a cube with a one in the middle. You put that into an LTI. You get a unit impulse response that's a little cube. Think Rubik's Cube. And you drive that through the volume, x, y, and z, and you get a 3D convolution. For that matter, you can do 4D, 5D, and whatever you want. Um, not really as practical, but certainly 3D convolutions work exactly the same way. Now, convolution's a pretty inexpensive calculation. What are you doing? You're taking this little filter and you're sliding it along, left to right, top to bottom, computing products and sums. Nothing particularly complicated. But as that convolution, um, as that uh, filter response gets bigger and bigger, we've been doing these little kernels, three by three, one by three, but we don't really have control over that. Why? Because you put a unit impulse response into an LTI, you get a response out five by five, seven by seven, nine by nine, 21 by 21 for all I know. I don't have a lot of control over that. And so when I'm doing the convolution sum here, the computational complexity is going to depend on the size of the kernel. So three by three, pretty good. Although if you have a lot of pixels, that's a lot of calculations that you're doing, sliding left to right, top to bottom. Now, every once in a while, when you get lucky, um, you can get a huge savings in doing your convolution when your filters are so-called XY separable. So what do I mean by that? Take your three by three unit impulse response, your kernel there. If it can be written as an outer product of a three by one column vector and a one by three row vector, let's make sure we see that linear algebra by the way. What is the product of a three by one vector and a one by three vector, a three by three matrix, right? We're taking an outer product, not an inner product. And so if I can write my kernel response, my filter as a product of these two 1D vectors, then I get a big savings. I'll show you the savings in a second. So now the question you wanna ask yourself is, well, when is that going to be true? And it's going to be true when you do a singular value decomposition on your kernel. So take that, think about that kernel response now, it's just a matrix, a little, whatever, three by three, five by five, seven by seven, I don't care. And do a singular value decomposition, which will tell you what the singular values of that matrix are. And if that kernel response is essentially a, corresponds to a matrix that is rank deficient, then all but one of the singular values will be zero. And what that means is that the first column of the U matrix and the first row of the V matrix form an outer product when scaled by the singular value corresponding to those two that is equal to your matrix. Remember that the very definition of SVD is that any matrix can be written as a product of these three matrices. U and V, of course, are orthonormal, and S is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the Diagonal. And so if all of them are zero, then the other columns in the rows in U and V don't matter. And so you can take any kernel and determine if it is separable. And why is that useful? Because now I'm going to convolve with two 1D filters instead of one 2D filter. Okay, let's see if what the savings on that is going to be. All right, so here's the convolution sum again. G of XY is equal to the sum. I've got my, my image over here and my unit impulse response that is shifting. And now let's just write it in terms of the convolution operator. There's the star operator again. And now there's my 2D kernel response. That's that guy right there. But I've just told you that according to SVD, I can write that 2D filter response as the product of two 1D filters, H1 and H2. And that's really nice because now I'm going to convolve with this in the horizontal direction, and this, the other one, h2 of y, in the vertical direction. So now let's think of the saving. Oh, first let me write the convolution sum. So now this 2D convolution over here can be written as a pair of 1D convolutions. Take f of x, y, convolve with h in the horizontal direction and y in the vertical. By the way, what does this mean here when I have 1D kernels, 1D filters, and a 2D image? 
Well, now we go back to the picture of convolution. What does convolution say? Take your filter response and slide it. Okay, well, if I have a 1D response, I'm just going to slide it along the row, slide it along the row, slide it on the row. There's just nothing top to bottom. And same thing with the vertical. I'm going to slide, 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 but now it's just got like a skinny little or a short fat um, uh, uh, filter. Perfectly fine. So what's the savings? I'm, I'm now I have to do two convolutions, not one. Well, let's see. How many values are in there? It's nine. How many values are in the separable? Six. So that means I'm only doing six multiplications and five adds versus nine multiplications and eight adds. And now that's not a huge savings for a three by three, but now let's go up. Let's say that my, my filter was say 11 by 11. So now I've got to do 11 cross 11, 121 multiplications and additions compared to 22. The savings become enormous as those unit impulse responses, those filters get bigger. And so every once in a while though, it's not always, but every once in a while you get lucky. And you'll hear about this, by the way, in deep learning and deep neural networks. People love these separable filters um, because they're computationally so much more efficient. All right, um, so we're gonna do another exercise um, and I'm going to have you uh, take in a 2D filter, and which is our gradient filter, figure out what are the two 1D filters, and then do the um, uh, compare convolutions to again compute the image gradient. And here's what you're gonna do. You're going to use this convolution called SciPy, SciPy SEP FIR, which stands for Finite Impulse Response. And it will take as input 1D filters in the horizontal and vertical directions and then do the convolutions for you. There's an SVD calculation, obviously, as part of NumPy. And so you're going to take that 2D filter from the previous exercise. You're going to do an SVD. You're going to grab the first column of the U matrix, the first row of the V matrix, and those are your two filters. Convolve with one in the horizontal direction, one in the vertical direction to get a vertical derivative, switch them to get the horizontal derivative, and then go ahead and compute the gradient. So two things you have to do there. Figure out what your filters are. I'm, not, I'm giving you the 2D filter, but you've got to figure out what the 1D filters are, and then go ahead and do the pair of convolutions. All right, go ahead and give it a try, and then we'll go through my solution. All right, let's see what the solution looks like. So again, I'm going to import um, SEP FIR. Um, here, um, ah, sorry, uh, here is the step. I've actually commented it out because every time I ran this, I didn't want to have to run the SVD. So here's the step that takes the filter from the previous exercise, that was the three by three filter, and computes U, uh, uh, D, as I called it here, and VT. So that's the U and the V. And you will, if you, if you just look at that, you will notice that the diagonal matrix has zero in two positions and non-zero, and I've just ripped out the values here instead of coding it in. I just looked at the values, I ripped them out, and there are my two filters, F1 and F2. I'm gonna do two uh, 1D convolutions, F1 in the horizontal direction, F2 in the vertical direction, and then F2 in the horizontal direction, F1 in the vertical direction. That's gonna give me my vertical derivative, how much are things changing top to bottom, and it gives you my horizontal derivative, how much are things changing left to right, I've got two derivatives, my and mx. I'm gonna pointwise square them. I'm gonna sum them. I'm gonna go ahead and compute the gradient. And then I'm going to display everything. And if it all worked, the picture looks exactly the same. I've got two derivatives over here. And then I've got my gradient over there. And everything works exactly the same. I was just able to save some computation. And again, with the three by three, it's not a huge savings. It is a savings, but not a huge saving. But as those filters get bigger, which they will, that separability is a huge win.